you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another hyper realistic reptile. Last time around we did a bearded dragon and you guys really liked that so of course I've got to do another one. So today we are going to be doing a green iguana. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm going to start with the clay face first and then we'll move on to making the clay feet. So with this clay face, I had to do it a little bit differently. I started like how I normally do. I made a tin foil lump, covered it in clay, but I did need to adjust the shape of it and I figured it'd be best to do that after I had a base to work with. So the main adjustment that I need to make before we start adding all details and stuff like that is adding those big chunky cheeks on the side of his face. And I figured it'd be best to save clay and use tin foil for this. So I made two tinfoil balls roughly about the same size, I squished them onto the side of the face and then I traced around them. Now since I'm trying to not waste my clay, plus the head is going to be quite large, I don't want it to be very heavy, I'm going to remove this clay where we traced around our tinfoil and then I'm going to put the tinfoil right inside of that. And then I'm going to roll out some clay and I'm going to cover these up and blend them into the face. There we go, that looks a lot better to work with. Okay, now we can start adding the details to it. So like always, I'm gonna start with my eyes first. Now these are actually the same type of eyes that I got for my bearded dragon, except the only thing different is I got a larger size, so I'm sorry, Iguana is going to be a lot larger. So I'm gonna get these positioned where I want them on the face, make sure they're nice and even, and then I'm gonna start building up clay around them to make the eyelids. Also, I want them to look like they're set into the head a little bit, so I'm going to make kind of a little brim right over the eyes. Then I'm going to start adding some texture and detail around the eyes. I'm mainly going for kind of a wrinkly effect, but I am going to also try and make it look a little bit scaly too. After that, I'm going to move on to the mouth, and I'm going to mark out where the opening of the mouth is going to be. Once I make sure that that's nice and even, I'm going to define that mark, and then I'm also going to be making some little nostrils for him. And then once I have those details laid down, I can start adding scales around them. So right now we pretty much have all our main details in place, so we can start focusing on the scales. And the only other detail that I need to add is going to be an ear, but basically the ear for an iguana is kind of a larger scale. So the little eardrum that you have in your ear, it's on the outside for them, so you're just kind of making a large scale for that. Now we're going to be kind of doing the same thing that we did with the bearded dragon, except we're not adding a full on beard, we're adding a frill. So this is going to be a lot longer and thinner, so the space that we need to clear up for that is going to be a lot thinner as well. I'm also going to be sculpting in a few wrinkles and folds just to add to the frill. After I get that done, I'm going to move back to making the scaling effect, and I'm also going to add little tiny horns at the end of the nose, because once an iguana gets larger, at least certain species, they kind of develop these little horns. And then right before I add the big scales on the cheeks, I'm going to add a texture to the top of the head and the cheeks, and then I can lay those out and straighten them up. Okay, I really like how our head came out. I'm ready to bake, so I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably roughly 45 to 55 minutes. And then once it's out of the oven and is cooled, we can start adding the frill to the neck. So I'm going to be using my sequins fabric for this. We used this on the Bearded Dragon's beard and it came out really good, so I figured this would work really well for the frill of the iguana. So the pattern for this is very simple. It has a left and a right, and we're going to be sewing these two pieces together. Once we have the two fabric pieces sewn together, we can flip it right side out and we can glue it into place. Okay, so now that the head is done and ready to be painted, we're going to move on to making the clay feet. I'm going to start with the front feet and then we'll probably move on to making the back feet. 
So the wireframe for this is going to be pretty simple. We're also making it very symmetrical so we don't have to worry about trying to make a left and a right. We can kind of choose which is going to be which once they're done. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to cover up the wireframe where all the wires combined. We're going to get that completely covered and then we're going to start adding some claws to the ends of each of the wires. So we're going to add a little bit of clay to the end of the wire and then we're going to kind of use our fingers to kind of create a point. You don't have to make the claws super sharp or anything, you just want it to look like they're a little bit pointed. So we're going to end up taking this and baking it for roughly about 15 to 20 minutes. That way we can save our progress and we don't have to worry about bumping anything while we're adding more clay. Once that's done baking and it's cold to touch, we can start adding more clay to it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering up the bottoms of the toes. So we're going to take strips of clay and we're just going to cover up all the wires and blend everything together. After that, we're going to bake this a second time for probably about the same time, 15 to 20 minutes. And then once it's out of the oven, we can start adding the scales to the tops of the feet. Now we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing to the back feet. The only thing different is our wire frame is going to be a lot larger, plus it's shaped a little bit differently. And so again, we're basically sculpting the bottom portion of the foot. Now the way we're going to do the scales on the tops of the toes for the iguana is going to be quite different than how we did it for the bearded dragon. With the bearded dragon we did kind of a zigzag motion with two rows, well this time around we're going to have three rows to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right at the nail bed and we're going to start laying out our little balls of clay for the scales. And we're just going to work our way up the toe. We're going to do this to all five of the toes on all of the feet, and then once we get to the base of the foot where all of the toes combined, we can start scaling that as well. Then the last thing we need to do is we need to clean up our edges, and we can bake these at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about 35 to 45 minutes. Once those are all done baking and have cooled to touch, we can start on our painting. Okay, so like the sculpting, we're going to start with the face first, and then we can move on to painting the feet. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to primer our face. I'm going to start with the bottom portion of the face and it's going to be a creamy khaki color. I'm also going to be painting part of the neck frill with it. I'm going to kind of cover up some of that gold so it's not so vibrant and it looks a bit more natural. While doing this, I'm making sure not to use a lot of paint on this so our sequins don't stick together. We just kind of want to cover it up a little bit. And then the top portion of the face is going to be a green and we're going to blend it into the khaki. Now I will admit the painting for this was quite difficult because green is just one of those colors that doesn't like to be paint. It just doesn't. So instead of just doing one coat where I matched the colors perfectly, I had to kind of do multiple layers to constantly adjust to get the correct tone. And you'll see that as we continue through the painting, the face just kind of keeps changing constantly. But now that we have our primer layer down, we can start adding our details. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start darkening the cracks in between some of the scales. The more larger scales, like around the lips, and then of course around the cheeks. I'm going to let that dry a little bit, and then I'm going to start adding more greens and stuff to the face, and kind of lightening and darkening different areas. Now the best way to actually brighten the color green is not to add white or anything to it because it'll make it more opaque. The best thing to do is add yellow to it. It'll make it more vibrant. So you'll notice that once I start adding more of a brightness to the face, I'm actually using a yellow and I'm also using kind of a mix between the green and the yellow. After a little bit of messing around with the colors, I realized I wanted to darken up the cracks in between the scales on the snout, so I also added that as well. That actually ended up working really well, and then afterwards I started adding some highlights. Now I actually started using a little bit of blues too to add some brightness in certain spots that I didn't want to be really limey, but I still wanted them to be bright. Okay, so the painting is basically done for the face. I just need to let this dry, and then I can take one of my little scratchy tools and clear off the paint that got on the glass eye. And that's basically all the painting for the face. Now I am going to be resining everything so the face isn't done yet, but I want to get the clay feet painted too. So the painting for the feet is going to be very similar to how we did the face. The only thing different is there's a lot less detail that we need to worry about. So like the bottom of the face, we're going to be doing the bottoms of the feet a nice khaki color, and then we're going to do the tops a nice green color. And we're also going to be making sure that they blend together nicely. So 
So we're going to let our first layer of paint dry and then after that's dried we can start adding different greens to the scales. So I think I want the ends of the toes to be a bit more brighter so I'm going to use lighter greens there and yellows and then the base of the foot I want to be more of a darker, almost bluish tone. And then after we're done painting the scales we need to work on the claws. So I'm going to leave it very simple and just go over them with a black. And then these were the front feet and we're going to do the same thing to the back feet. And then after all of the painting is done for our feet, we just need to let them dry a little bit and then we can mix up some resin and go over all of the painting that we've done. We're going to do the same thing to the face. So after we get that brushed on, we're going to have to leave these sitting overnight. So while those are curing, we can start on sewing. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do before we start on the sewing is show you guys the pattern that I'm working with. So I've drawn all of this out and I just sketched it out and cut it out. We're going to use this to cut our fabric pieces. Now the tail was a little too long to get the whole body into the shot, so I cut it off and I put it up above so you guys can see what it looks like. But when I cut my fabric out, I'm going to have all of this connected. So of course I got the sides of the body, the pieces for the legs. We're going to be doing the legs a little bit differently, but I'll get to that. And then we have a strip of fabric for the belly. Now most of the fabric pieces that I want to use are going to be covered in sequins, but the sequins fabric that I have is kind of see-through, so I need to have a fabric underneath it kind of as a backing. So what I did was I just took a kind of khaki colored fabric, I cut out my patterns, and then I laid them out on the sequence, I pinned them into place, and we're just going to sew all the way around these, connecting the two layers together. So we're doing this with the sides of the body and then the top portions of the feet. And then the belly and the under portions of the legs are just going to stay the khaki fabric. So I'm going to get my two layers of fabrics all sewn together so we have all our pieces ready, and then we can start putting our body together. So the first bit of sewing that I think we're going to work on is going to be for the feet. So we're going to take the bottom portion and the top portion, lay them together, and we're going to sew down just the front of them, connecting them together. We need the back open so we can add a wire frame to this later once the body is put together, and it just makes it a whole lot easier. Then I'm going to take the side pieces of the body and we're going to be sewing the tail together. So I'm going to be sewing the top portion and the bottom portion and just closing it all up. After that, I'm going to take the strip of fabric for the belly and we're going to be sewing it between the two layers of the sides of the body. So that's basically connecting everything together, but it's leaving the back open so we can add our wire frame and everything later. So now I just need to flip my tail right side out and then we can start putting our body together. And like I said before, we're going to be dealing with the legs a little bit later. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a wire frame. I made a very simple one and we're going to be putting it inside of the body. So we're going to stuff the tail first and then we're going to run the wire for the tail through the tail. Then we're going to take the wires for the legs and we're going to cut some little holes where we're going to have the legs and we're going to just slide them through. Now for the legs, we have a sewn circle marking out where we're going to connect the legs later, but we're not going to be cutting that all the way out. We're just going to be cutting a tiny little hole just enough for the wire to fit through. Now we're going to be taking our clay head and we're going to be gluing it to the wire for the neck. Once that's cooled and dried, we're going to start gluing the fabric for the neck around the base of the head. Now I do need to adjust my pattern a little bit for this because you notice that the fabric doesn't reach all the way around the head and that's because I made the head a lot bigger than I thought it would be. It's still proportional, it was just rounder than I thought it would be and I drew the pattern out for the fabric before we made the clay head. So all I need to do to fix this is make a little triangle of fabric and I'm going to glue that in place and we can sew it up. Okay, so before we start stuffing and closing up the body, what we need to do is we need to get some spikes so we can sew those on while we close them up. I made these out of felt and I just kind of painted them a little bit and they've dried and everything so they're a little stiffer than normal felt, which is a good thing because I need them to stand up. And we're just going to be closing up the body while sewing these on. 
So I'm just going to start at the head and work my way down, slowly stuffing the body as I get closer and closer to the end. And now our poor iguana needs some legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the fabric pieces for those and we're going to sew them in place. Now they're not going to show up on camera very well because even I'm having a little trouble seeing them, but I do have some sewn in lines and what we're going to do is we're going to follow those lines as we sew the limbs on. So we're not just randomly sewing the limbs on in a circle, we are following the pattern. So I'm going to start with the fabric for the front legs and I'm going to start with the top of that and then work my way all the way down and around. And then we're going to do the same thing with the back legs, we're going to sew the top into place and then the bottom. Once we have all the fabric sewn into place for the legs, now we can start adjusting our wires and adding our feet to the ends of them. So again, I'm going to start with the front legs and I'm going to take the wires that are sticking out of the clay legs and the wires for the legs themselves and we're going to wrap those together with a thinner gauge wire. The body is made out of a 16 gauge and then the wire we're wrapping everything in is going to be a 20 gauge. We're going to wrap these really nice and tight, use as much wire as you think is needed to make sure that they hold into place, and then once all the legs are done, we can start gluing the fabric around the wrists and ankles. All of this is of course going to have to dry for a little bit, and then once it's dried, we can close up the legs. And of course, while we're closing the legs up, we are going to be stuffing them because we don't have any other openings for them. Okay, so our body is all put together. We're basically done except for one final step and this is going to give us a lot more detail in the piece. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the fabric and the sequins. I'm going to start with the underbelly first and start adding greens to the khaki colored fabric. And I'm just going to slowly work my way to the sides and then once we have the belly done we can flip our doll right side over and we can start fixing up the top. So the sides and the belly are going to be a brighter green and we are going to darken up the top of the back. And kind of like we did with the clay pieces, we need to do a bunch of different layers to get the correct colors, that way we can match the clay pieces. Now iguanas do have kind of black stripes, they're kind of a little bit random, but the ones on the tail tend to be a bit bolder, so I'm going to kind of mess around with adding stripes to the body. And while I was doing this, I realized I needed to kind of brighten up the back of the iguana a bit more, so I did kind of adjust colors here and there, and you'll notice just like with all the other clay pieces, the colors and patterns changed as we went quite a bit. Lastly, I kind of added a little bit of a speckling of white here and there just to kind of brighten things up. And then I'm going to actually kind of make some scale bumps on the back of the neck. So I have these little half pearls and I'm going to be gluing them into place. Now the reason they're purple is not because I wanted purple, it's because the largest ones I had were purple. And we're going to be painting over these anyway, so that color really didn't matter. So I'm going to glue these into place kind of in a rough pattern and then I'm going to paint over them with the colors that are around them. And that's how I made a green iguana. I had so much fun with this piece and I can't wait to work on more reptiles. I got a few more lined up. Plus we're going to be doing a mystery snake video pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop. So check the links down below if you want to buy anything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.